Hello XJet channel viewers and today I'm going to show you my TIG welder and how it works basically but this is it, this is the box itself and you can see it's got lots and lots of little knobs and dials on here because you can change many many different parameters and settings to get the best welding job and there are things that plug in the front, there is a rather fat and juicy cable here which is the earth and this is the cable that goes off to the torch there is a foot switch here, foot control, varies, varies the current so I can make it hotter or colder and then there's this gas line which delivers gas from this bottle over here which is filled with argon, an inert gas, one of the noble gases. The argon goes through a little regulator there that establishes a constant flow and into the back of the machine where it switches off and on in accordance with the welding switch on the foot pedal. So there you go. That is the welder but of course there's more than that. There is this torch here. Here's the torch. And the torch is an important part of the whole welding setup because here is where the, the gas comes up and it goes through this little ceramic cup here and surrounds that wire electrode you can see. That's a tungsten electrode and that carries the current that creates an arc which produces an immense amount of heat when you're welding and that's the heat that melts the metal that you're welding. Now of course you have to have the argon gas there because once you heat metal up it rapidly oxidizes in the presence of oxygen so the argon displaces the oxygen and provides a completely inert environment which means that the, the metal doesn't oxidize it and therefore it flows and joins together without all sorts of contamination. Now obviously um, this little tungsten tip has to be held very close to the work so that the arc is relatively short and you have to vary the current that flows through that arc in order to maintain a adequate heat in the world but not melt the whole thing into a blob and to do that down here on my messy floor we have a foot pedal which as you can see I can operate with my foot, I can push down on it it's like a sewing machine pedal really and as I push down more and more current passes through the tip on the welding torch and that means the work gets hotter it's really quite simple it's just the electricity provides the heat to melt the metal and the metal will flow together because of course you have to make things scrupulously clean when you're TIG welding otherwise the metal doesn't flow together it just sits there and forms two separate lumps with a big hole in the middle but uh, here's what I'm going to be welding up today. This is the back plate off my DL50 motor, the old DL50. And as you can see, it's broken. I've already welded up the loads and I've milled them down again so they, they fit. But this one broke again because this is actually quite hard to weld, this cast metal. It's quite often got impurities and um, inclusions in it. So I'm going to weld it up and that will require me to use AC welding. And there's a difference. There's two types of TIG welding. There's AC and DC and, and you can tell that because on the welding front, a welder's front panel here has AC and DC and basically what that means is you can weld with a direct current or an alternating current going through the tip of the torch which is under the table again so why would you want to use one or the other well it's fairly simple DC is the best to use because it puts more heat into the work instead of the heating up that tungsten most of the heat actually goes into the metal that you're welding so in that case, why would you want to use AC? Well, AC is for welding aluminium, or aluminium as you Americans call it. The problem with aluminium is that even though you've got an inert atmosphere coming out of this torch, the argon gas there doesn't uh, prevents oxidation, what happens is that the aluminium itself still has an oxide layer on it because the moment you clean aluminum it immediately re-oxidizes and oxide on aluminum is incredibly hard and it contaminates everything and you won't get the metal to flow together you'll get the two blobs of metal with a gap between them so by using AC what that does is the reverse current virtually sucks that contamination away it cleans the metal using the electrical current flowing in the reverse direction so with AC it spends a little bit of time cleaning the weld area and then turns the current around and heats it up so it's kind of a, a cleaning and welding process at once which is absolutely essential so that's why we have an AC setting and as well as the actual AC setting itself there is a little knob on here which if I can find it because I haven't played with it for a while, here we go um, pulse with blah 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 post flow, pulse current, down slope, where's it gone? oh we can change the frequency which has an effect and here we go SPI this enables us to um, run more direct current or more current in one direction than the other normally I set it at about 50% which means half the time it's cleaning, half the time it's heating but if the weld is, is a particularly hard one I might wind that up to get more cleaning action or wind it down to get more heat into the join so there we go that's the equipment, that's the welder and of course over here we've got a big fat earth clamp because this welder can do currents of up to 200 amps which is a lot of current and 
we need to make sure that the current flows easily. So we have these big fat cables, a big strong earth clamp, and I have a metal table on which I weld, and that conducts the current, in most cases the, the, the rest of the current from the torch goes through there back to the welder. So that's the setup for doing the TIG welding. And I won't actually be using this tip, because this tip is for doing uh, DC welding. This is actually called a gas lens because it creates a nice laminar flow of gas over the tip, so you don't have to use so much gas. But in welding aluminum or aluminium, you've got to use much more current, so I have to use a fatter uh, electrode, and I have to use a bigger cup, so that I get more gas flowing. So that's what I'll be doing. Anyway, that is how the TIG welder works, and also uh, I'll be doing some stainless welding later on the pulse jet. In fact, that's when I use this. This is my stainless welding tip. I use this because I can get very, very fine arcs out of this, and for welding stainless, it's only half a millimetre, it's 20 thousandths of an inch thick, then you really need to have a very, very fine tip and a very, very fine control of the arc. So this is my stainless welding stuff, and I'll show you the AC welding stuff when I get to that. But that's enough for today, because I've got to get on and do some work. So thank you for watching. Any questions, put them on the bottom of this video. Thanks for watching. See you again.